and all the time. It is nice to be here and it's wonderful to be here. Yeah, we thank God for uh, the week and I am also glad that you are able to attend. I want to just urge you that uh, ensure that if you didn't listen to the morning presentation, you know we have a meeting in the morning and some of you may not be there. Make sure you follow up so that you get the full what? The full message. Because uh, we are doing a series and there is a series that is done in the morning, a continuation for which we do an evening one. So if you missed the morning, you may have some loopholes uh, that are not cleared. And I would not want you to miss any instruction. I want us to pray. I believe you've come with friends. Uh, for the interest of time, I'll not take time to welcome them. I'll just tell them to feel at the feet of Jesus. But I want us to have sufficient time to study and learn. I also told you to ask questions. There are some that came to me. I will see how to address them since we have today, tomorrow. And tomorrow what? Evening. And then I think Sabbath, uh, we will find a way of wrapping up uh, this whole session. Let's have a word of prayer as we begin. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in your house. As we study your word, may I reduce to nothing. May the Spirit of God take my lips and put your words in my mouth. Oh Lord, how I pray that may you take difficult truth and make it simple. That we all may understand your counsel and your will. For this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, we've been looking at seven steps to a happy what? A happy marriage and uh, I shared with you that courtship and marriage is just an expression of how converted you are and how closely you walk with Christ. The things we are sharing here are not all about uh, human effort. They are about conversion. Are we together? The things we are learning cannot be done merely because you want to do them. You must have a connection with God. A connection with God is what will create some of the things that we are learning here. And that is why I, I need to put a lot of emphasis on that. In the morning we learned about what was our topic this morning. Those who are there. Yeah? We didn't discuss seeking counsel. We reverted it to the night, isn't it? What did we study in the morning? Am I prepared for? For marriage. We, we did a continuation of am I prepared for? For marriage. And uh, there are certain points that I would not want you to miss as we are moving forward. In am I prepared for marriage, we were able to discuss and clearly understand that uh, marriage at the end of the day requires uh, the man and the woman who are getting married to understand that age and experience are very important if you're going to enter a courtship or a marriage. And I remember yesterday and even in the morning we said unions that are made when people are still too young always end up being wretched and miserable. You remember? And that is why we say that the affections that you have towards a woman or a man should be constrained until experience and old age will give you the opportunity to unfetter them. A young girl or a young man may not understand how to say no to sex. You may not understand how to say no to somebody you are not attracted to or somebody you are not willing to quote. That is why we say in your student life, to a large extent, you should spend growing spiritually and building your career. Then when the right time comes to look for a partner, God will actually guide you because it is Jesus, we learned yesterday, who gives a prudent what? Wife. And if you find a, a prudent wife, you obtain favor from who? From God. We were able to establish those points. We also discussed and, and established that within the circle of friendship, whether you are in courtship or not, there are certain things that you should not do among yourselves 
that should only be done among married people. You remember? We say it whether you are friends or you are courting or you are buddies or with whatever name you call yourselves. There are certain things that you cannot do and still glorify God. Which ones were they? Yeah, you cannot engage in kissing, cuddling, sex, caressing, anything that is sensual because a snake bites without enchantment, isn't it? And at the same time, I gave you an example. You can't ignite a car and not take a ride, isn't it? You ignite it like that, sooner or later you will take a ride. Many young people confuse and tell themselves that Adutafanya, it will never happen to us. But eventually, after a while, it happens because you are tempting Satan to tempt you. You are telling him, hey Satan, we want some temptation in our life. And, and, and the devil likes that kind of attitude. I even give you the idea and knowledge that it, if possible, when you are quoting, ensure that in your youth, court in areas where you can be spotted and there are more people. Do not narrow your mind that if you are meeting your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you must be in a closed room. There is no amen. 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 But this is wise counsel. That will actually, actually help you protect yourself. We spoke also about late night meetings. You remember? I'm just trying to remind you some of the things we learned in the morning. And we say the angels of God are not happy when you are keeping the society of each other till late at night. And I gave you an example. There is nothing wrong with telling a man who has come to your room na imefika saa tatu ama sani na watakulala. You can tell the man, it's time for me to sleep. And kindly may you excuse us. We can continue talking if you want tomorrow during the day. You, 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 as, as a lady I shared with you, you need to have principles. And the same with the men who are here regarding some of the things you do. I also talked about being reserved and being modest. But today I want to venture into a field uh, of how to, how, to, how to start a relationship. How do you actually start a relationship when the age is right? When, when you've come to a point where now you need to you need to engage a lady or you need to engage a man. And uh, I want us to be able to see the concepts that are given by the Bible regarding how to start a relationship. And actually the, the topic is seeking what? Counsel. Seeking counsel. So, uh, in looking at this, I, I, want, I want us to be very open this evening as we study this subject. And uh, I want us to really ponder and think. There are things that we've learned through the week that I, I believe are now riveted in your mind. But I want us to be able to come to a point where we can reason and think. How should a man approach a lady that he is interested to court? Or how should a lady approach a man that she is interested to do what? To court. There are certain points that I made clear during the week. And I want to repeat. Do not court somebody that you do not know in the name of knowing them during the courtship. In fact, most statistics and researches say the happiest marriages are those ones where the people who courted and got married were initially friends for a duration of time. Yeah, this is free counsel, this is research, this is psychology, this is something that works. The best marriage is a marriage where the two people who are getting married are not just partners in marriage, but they're also very good what? Very good friends. And that is why, quote somebody that you already know is in harmony with the will of God. And that is why we said, 
when you are looking for someone to marry, study them before you quote them. Don't quote them to study them. If you quote them to study them, what you are doing is called de dating. And we say dating is, it is sinful, it is satanic. It, it does not actually bear the, the, the signature of God. So quote someone. When you are here in school and you are not ready for courtship now, you can study, you can study Grace or Jane or whoever and you can see their life. See, you are your classmates. See, you church board. See, you are a mission. See, you are Sabbath school. See, you can tell someone's character. You don't have to be in that person's relationship to know them. So remove from your mind this evening the idea that to know someone, you must you must actually approach them and begin a relationship. And that is why I want to make this very clear. Do not engage the attention of any man or any woman until you are convinced that it is God who has led you and they have passed all the tests. And number three, you have sought counsel regarding that person. I believe that you may think you have understood my statement that you may not have understood it. I want to repeat it. Because it's very important. Do not engage the attention of any man or any woman until you are convinced beyond any reasonable doubt that God has given you an okay and your parents have given you an okay and this courtship is going to lead to marriage. Amen. Many pata kweli. Ama imewa pita. So most of you, when do you engage the attention of a lady or a man? Or perhaps maybe I may have to describe what does it mean to engage the attention of someone? I want to hear from you. Anybody who can give a slight indication of what it means to engage the attention of someone. Yeah, let me give you a good, a good way I can engage a lady's attention. Do you know a good way? Every time we are traveling going somewhere, I want to pay your fare. <laughs> You're getting it. I'm already giving you very clear indications that I want to be responsible for you a lot much more than just friends. <laughs> Every time before you sleep, I tell you good night. So, kuna good night on Monday, good night Tuesday, good night Wednesday. And the day I will not say good night, you feel sick. Unajuliza, nabona leo wajafanya nini? Even though I have not proposed to you, I'm already engaging your heart, your attention. By the way, you need to know that some of those things, you are invading someone's personal space and making them have hope. You are developing in them something that is beyond simply friendship. So you need, to, you need to understand that do not invade the space of a man or a woman introducing romance or that kind of relation until you are convinced. And that is why yesterday I taught you about being reserved and more modest. So that you don't entertain each other and infiltrate each other's spaces creating hope. And that is why you will find that there are some things we consider very important. You need to scan this person and be sure that God has given you a green flag that this is the way to go. You need to scan, is the person a believer? Amen? And who is a believer? Someone who believes present what? Truth. Has the test been passed? You need to understand that. Understand question number two. Is God calling you to marry? You cannot engage someone's attention when there is no call to marriage. That is very important. Number three. Do you have sufficient age, 
experience and resources to take a step in courtship. Very important. Those are factors you need to really understand. Question number four. Is it three or four? Are you compatible with each other? Compatible can mean a lot of things. Compatibility can be one, age. Do you know age is compatibility? Yeah, I don't expect someone who is 50 years old to marry a 20 year old. There is no love there. You see, Upendo. That's your daughter. You get the point? You need to look at compatibility. Compatibility can even be in the range of education. Can you imagine a professor marrying a class 8 dropout? Do you think that lady will have sufficient ability? To reason with the professor and put sense in his mind. You're getting the point. Compatibility may also mean how much you can bear with each other's personality. Me, I've come to learn even in ministry, there are just some people you know that you cannot get along with very well. And in the name of, of the Lord and, and the Bible, you are struggling for the two of you to get along. Why are you looking at me like I'm saying something that is, that is strange? Do you know, you may have no issue with someone, but you just don't like the way they dress. You get? Yeah, you don't, li you don't like the red socks, the yellow trouser. And the green coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is compatibility. Analyze all those factors. And like I shared with you. That where true love is. God will be brought into all the plans. And will be in perfect harmony with the will. With the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? Ensure that everything God requires is indicated. Meaning, scan the person before you get into their space. And one thing I will tell you, if I know, if I get into your space, I will always behave the way you want me to behave. Let me give you a honest confession. Majority of people who are married say that their wives or their husband changed after the wedding. What do you think causes this? What do you think brings that change? Because one thing I know, many of you may are not, you're not married here, so you may not know, but there is a challenge I find many men, they, they are always in fear that their wife may change. What brings that change? It is because you entered courtship before studying an individual. So when they were courting you, they were keeping it clear, they wanted to make sure they are what you want them to be. Do you know if I want a church girl, and I don't want to be in the church, I will always be in the church for her. You know that? Ni rafuta ni class gani ya lesson uye uka. Na kama najua ataniacha ju, mimi ni unbeliever na mlifunzu wa wiki ya kwambo siyo ya unbeliever. Nitakuwa? Believer? Na nikuja wapi? Apu tukwa darasa laki na nibatizwe. You get the point? And that is why we say, do not know someone when you are quoting them. Study them before you tell them your intention. Eliezer made sure that Rebecca understood the intention after studying Rebecca's character. Are we clear? 
Alimwambia feed this camel. No, alimwambia hivyo. Hapana. Yeye alikuja hapo akaambia Mungu, wewe nionye nionyeshe. Yule mwenye atafanya tendo hili nikiona nitajua ni yeye. And you know she fed all the camels about 7000 liters of water. And and with no motivation. The other time I was telling you Eliezer hata akomwambia go on go on after this there is a reward. Keep up and elea kupeleka. After this you know you are getting married to Isaac. Did you do that? There was no motivation, there was no promise, there was no reward. And she kept doing it because it was her natural character. And one thing I guarantee you as men and women, there is nothing as beautiful as marrying someone when the person you are getting married to is exactly who you knew before you courted them. Amen. So that later in marriage you are not wondering what hit you. You don't sit down in regret with pain and tears and you're wondering what is happening to me. And one thing I tell most people by the way, when your marriage is crumbling, you're always seeing it happening and you tell yourself it's happening to me. Is it really happening to me? And you can see it's actually happening to you. It's happening. See it in mchezo. And that is the reason why the moment you are you are approaching someone approach them when you've passed through these tests and you are certain about it and remember seeking counsel comes when you've already done your own research are we together you cannot come to me and tell me that Joshua can you tell me of a lady to marry here i that is um, i can't guide you on that you are supposed to have known the lady then now i can be a source of what Cancel. I don't know if you're getting what I mean. You must first of all do your own research, your time with God, analyze those factors we have looked at. There are some more we will look at. I shared with you some of them are even more important, but as we finish the week we will see them more clearly that you should never get married to a woman who is not an economist or hard working. We saw some of those points. And a lady should never get married to a man who is irresponsible and unaccountable irresponsible and unaccountable he cannot give an account of what he wants to do what he's doing now or what he wants to do in the future a man must be visionary must be responsible and must be accountable that is why i was sharing with some of you that if you are indeed a, a responsible person even in campus you should be understanding that sooner or later you need to be doing savings you need to be projecting on how you really want your life to be those are very important points because the marriage will have children bills rent we are together clothes and there is nothing as bad as two married people depending on their parents or neighbors there there is nothing as disgusting as that meana wawili kidogo kidogo tutumie pesa ya mboga Sijui tulikuwa tunaenda trip na kuna pesa. Sijui tulikuwa tunaona I, I don't know if you're getting how bad that is. And that is the reason why you need to organize yourself very well. In fact, organize yourself so well that by the time you're getting married at least the first year there are a lot of things that you can be able to do even if you're not working. So I'm not saying that that is exactly how things ought to be, but I'm saying a man must be very responsible. Do you know there are men you will meet by the way? Mwenye 40,000 inaingia kwa mfuko yake leo, but next week hujui ilienda wapi. Huh? TV linunuliwa ya 42 inch. You get? Kwa nini nimewachokoza? Eh? Alibuy TV na akabai nini? Ufa. Alibai TV na ufa na hapo ajamaliza fi ya campus. Lakini kwa roho anasema somehow I'll get money to clear the what. Those habits will come into the marriage. Guy I guarantee you. Do you know there are homes that are always in debt? Ama you've never come across them. They're always in what? In debt. 
they're always in debt because they are budgeting beyond what they can gain. The man of the house is supposed to be the financial manager of the family, does not know that you're supposed to cut your quote according to your what. I tell most people, by the way, if you are renting a place, this, this, is, this, is, this is statistics, this is research, you should never pay rent that is more than 30% of what you earn. Rent should be 30% or less of your salary. Probably 20, ikielekea 10. Are we together? Unapata mtu, ana earn pesa na 50% ameingiza kwa rent. Iti unataka ku live class fulani. Now those are very terrible decisions you are making there. So at the end of the day, you need to have analyzed all these things. The big question should not be that you love each other. Love is important, but love is not blind. It is not what? Unreasonable. It is not. If love is genuine, all these factors will make sense. So let no one deceive you. Eti upendo sijue aioni. Upendo aioni hizo vitu. Mi bora napenda uyo kijana. My friend, as soon as the wedding is over, and one month has passed, you will wake up to a serious realization <laughs> that actually love plans. Love is something that glorifies. L love is something reasonable. And so seeking counsel comes when now you have already identified someone, amen, by God's grace, and you want the opinion of others. In fact, the Bible says where no counsel is, the people people fall. And I normally say, cancel is very important because it's an indication of humility. We are together. Humility. Anybody who is humble enough to know they can make a mistake will always want guidance. And the interesting thing is your first counsel must be God. We are together. The others are to validate what God has already shown you. Proverbs 15.22 says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. So I want you to understand, it will be very wrong, after you've done all your research and identified someone, to just decide to approach them and begin a relationship with them without asking those of experience. Without consulting with with people who know God. In fact, it says every purpose is established by counsel and with good advice make war. Proverbs 20 verse 18. Counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. That is Proverbs 20 verse 5. Always seek counsel. You'll find most of the kings of Israel before they went to war. The question they always ask is, is there a prophet that we may inquire of the law? Of the Lord. Is there a prophet? David never did anything without inquiring of a prophet. Marriage is so important that do not enter marriage without counsel. Do not. I shared with you at the beginning that out of a hundred marriages, out of a hundred, how many meet the requirements of God and are happy? Just one, isn't it? Out of every hundred. What makes you think you will not be in the, in the ninety-nine? To listen to Kweli, what makes you think you want to be the 99 unhappy ones? Nanilewele the interesting thing about marriage is once you get there, it is unconditional. There is no coming out. <laughs> the only thing that can make you come out is adultery. We are together. And even that adultery, it must be given proof and evidence. We are together. You must be able to substantially prove that your partner actually was unfaithful to you, beyond reasonable doubt, we are together. And the partner uh, admits the, the mistake. And then you see that there is no way for forgiveness for the two of you. But at the end of the day, a divorce is a very painful process. Most people who have survived a divorce are never the same after. It shatters you. It shatters your, your, your faith in humanity. It shatters your understanding of life. I would not want anyone to go through a divorce. Not even your children want it. Amen? It destroys 
how the children grow and their perception of their parents. Divorce can even wreck education and, and development of character of a child. So we don't want that. You need to seek counsel before you approach someone and tell them that you want to spend the rest of your life with them. Because we had said from the very onset that you are not quoting for fun. You are not quoting for sex. You are not quoting to... You are quoting to get what? Married. Anything else is a wrong reason. So I shared with you that meekness and lowliness of heart will lead men to desire counsel at every what? Step. Testimonies to the church, to ministers and gospel workers. Page 501. If there is any subject that should be considered with calm reason and an impassioned judgment, it is the subject of marriage. If ever the Bible is needed as a counselor, it is before taking a step that binds persons together for life. So that is, marriage is unconditional. You cannot take back that step. And that is very clear. I remember in my own life, one of the things I love in teaching these things is when you can use your own testimonies. When the pastor was telling me to make a vow, I remember th those, those statements sobered me up. Because he told me to say that do you take so and so as your lovely in the name of God. Actually, Alianzana, in the name of God. I am supposed to say that. <laughs> I take so and so as my lovely wedded wife in holy matrimony to love and to cherish forsaking all others. And then akaniyaka nisemi hizo vitu zingine in sickness and in health and, and in what and in what. As I was saying those things, I was sobered up. And for a moment, I trembled. It is not that I didn't love the lady I was married to, but I understood that once ni mepita hapa, there is no what? Hakuna reverse. And then the pastor asked me, are you sure? And of course, I, I said I'm sure. But at the back of my mind, I knew. There are no other options I have. This is the end of my relation with anybody else. And, and that is something I need you to understand right now. When you're quoting, have that vow in mind. If it is Mary you are taking, it is Mary you are choosing, in your mind, no, you'll spend the rest of your life with Mary. You will age together. You will grow old together. You'll have children together. You will fight, forgive each other. You will misunderstand each other. <laughs> You're getting it. Yeah. And sometimes you will feel that your love is even running dry. You have to pray God bring it back. Marriage, is, marriage requires the two of you to understand that this is a life issue. You cannot just walk into it. And that is why the Bible is needed. The underhand way in which courtships and marriages are carried on is the cause of a great amount of misery, the full extent of which is known only to God. On this rock, thousands have made shipwreck of their souls. If there is any subject that should be considered, I think we've seen that. Professed Christians whose lives are marked with integrity and who seem sensible upon every other subject make fearful. They manifest a set determined will that reason cannot change. You find they know very well that there is danger in marrying an unbeliever, but because they are inclined to it, they do it anyway. I shared with you some of the things we experience as preachers. You go somewhere and a lady tells you they were battered by their husband, or they are, their husband abuses them, calls them names, and you tell them, why would a Seventh-day Adventist husband do that? And then Rasia Kikwambia is not Adventist. Now, Melissa, did you know that before you married him? Yes, I did. Then what should we pray for? You brought this upon yourself? Upon yourself. And that is a very difficult situation. People don't want to follow common sense. They manifest a set determined will that reason cannot change. They become so fascinated with human feelings and impulses that they have no desire to search the Bible and come into close relationship with God. So th they don't have a desire to know what God has to say. It is all about how I feel. How I feel. And that is what Hollywood is throwing to the world. How I feel. 
I feel like now I need to be in a relationship. I feel like now I should be married. I feel like now I should be I should be hugged. Nasikia mtu anataka kwa status. Na feel kuhagiwa leo jioni. By the way, I don't know sometimes have you ever sat down na shangaa? Nini huwa kuwakiliza watu kwa status? Because sometimes I sit down and ask myself, what was this person thinking? I remember I remember when we were in campus, we were almost having a church board. <laughs> because one of the ladies who was with us in the church had put in there in her Facebook page that she desires to have a man to have sex with on her Facebook page. So there are some people who are always online. You know, you know those people? They are always online. So I wake up for five minutes. Only five minutes. But the online online people saw it. Now Alisha yona di wakai screenshot. Watu ni wabaya pa nje. Walisha yona wakai screenshot. For evidence. So mina shuka na letewa kwa room. Imagine sister so and so ali post TV. Yeah, I'm like really? This happened. And it brought a lot of issues. I was wondering what she was thinking. Of course, we never, we never, I, we never got to, to establish and discuss it. I, I said that thing is not something worth bringing where. Maybe that was a temptation. Let's leave it at that. Unless there is, there is vital what? <laughs> we, cannot, we cannot bring something like that. Maybe someone used her phone. We don't know. We, let's have some benefit of, da- of doubt in the issue. <laughs> if she removed it, then probably she had a feeling. But one thing I want you to understand is that feelings and impulses are not a guide when you are looking for a partner or in the things of God. In fact, faith is not a feeling. Faith is not a what? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not yet what? That are not yet seen and by it our elders obtained a good report. It is that faith that we need to understand. Faith in the promises of God. Faith in doing what God has commanded you. Faith in following God. It is that same faith that will sustain your marriage. Because if God has given you a woman, he can't give you a woman who will mess your life. Neither can he give you a man who will mess your life. So trust him and follow his word. Amen? You need to have that in mind. If there ever was a subject that needed to be viewed from every standpoint, it is the aid of the experience of others and a calm, careful weighing of the matter on both sides is positively essential. It is a subject that is treated altogether too lightly by the great majority of people. I wish I could make the youth see and feel their danger, especially the danger of making unhappy marriages. Marriage is something that will influence and affect your life both in this world and in the world to come. A sincere Christian will not advance his plans in this direction without the knowledge that God approves his course. He will not want to choose for himself, but will feel that God must choose for him. And that is why I tell most people, if you are close to God, even in your walk, after looking for someone, identifying someone through the will of God, you may even want to ask God for a sign. You are too afraid to make a mistake. You will not want to take a step that is out of harmony with the will of God. We are not to please ourselves, for Christ pleased not himself. There's, there's a continuation on that. It says, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. Jesus did not please himself. I think this is from Adventist Home, chapter 6. I think the first three paragraphs. So the, the steps of a good man are ordered by, and he delighted in his way. Psalms 37, verse 23. So seeking counsel is something that is very critical, and the first person you have to seek counsel from is God. There is something that my brother asked me in the morning, and I want to reiterate for those who are not there. You asked me how we know the will of God, isn't it? And I shared in the morning that the only way you will know the will of God are four ways. How many who can remind us the first way? Yeah? Through his word, isn't it? The Bible is God's voice. Everything about courtship that is found in the Bible 
is supposed to guide you. It will not be out of harmony with the Bible. Way number two, the Spirit of God. One thing I want to share with you, young people, that you need to know. When you are going to get married and you are sincere in every step, what are all the things we are looking for? The Spirit of God in your heart, if you ask God by faith, will convict you and approve the decision you are taking. Or if it is not in harmony with God, He will create in you an unwillingness to take that step. Amen? God will not just leave you like that. One thing I came to learn from majority of people who claim that God gave them a woman or a man, you will hear all of them say a common statement. They will tell you, the moment I made that step and made that decision, I was satisfied in my conviction that it is God who had led me. Do you know, do you know there is a peace? There is a peace that comes with God's direction in anything. We are getting what I am saying. Kuna peaceful ani. There is a peace. You are, just, you are just feeling peaceful and calm in your heart that God has guided you. And the interesting thing about that peace is that that peace comes in your prayers. It comes in your activity with God. You don't feel condemned. There is no feeling of condemnation or alienation from God. You feel that God is, is walking with you. you. You feel the breath of God in your heart. You know that he is guiding you. The Spirit of God will actually convict you. Then I talked about number three, the counsel of godly what? Godly men. Godly people will always approve if you are married to the right person or you are quoting the right person. You will find your pastor will meet the lady and say, You will find your parents to a large extent will approve. And even fellow men of God that you fear will recommend. There is no way you... Everybody can be mad except you. But those are things you really need to consider. Hakuna jinsi wazazi wako, watu wakanisa, marafiki zako wenye wanajua mungu, wote wanaona kuna shida except you. <laughs> you are getting me? You need to really understand that as a very important point. And then the last one was providence, isn't it? Yeah, most of the time, the person you are going to get married for, will probably come from Kenya because God providentially set you up to be where? In Kenya. <laughs> you get the point? So God is speaking to you through providence. To Kofa Moja. So you cannot be telling us that you have to marry a German huh? or you have to marry a Russian. Yeah. Hmm? It doesn't have to be that way. So seeking counsel does not mean that anyone is to marry one whom he does not what? This would be sin. But fancy and emotional nature must not be allowed to lead on to God requires the whole, the supreme. And that is why I shared with you what I shared with you yesterday. I don't believe that the spirit of God can convict a lady so that when they have a breakup, she tells the man that if you don't marry me, I'm going to kill myself. That one is fancy and emotional it is not reason it may be God who has put some sense into that man to say no because the two of you are unfitted are we together there is one assumption I want to get out of your mind it is the idea that there is someone in this room that if you are not married to your life is done do you know we have about 7.3 billion people in the whole world 7 point what? 3 billion. What is wrong with you? <laughs> hmm? If someone tells you no, accept the no, thank them for being honest and don't break the friendship. Amen? Don't go away mad. <laughs> I'm 40. Now you can't see each other face to face. Hmm? I don't know if you're getting the point I'm bringing. You, you need to understand that very well. There are 7.3 billion people in the whole world. And God has infinite opportunities. And openings for you. Amen? Amen. Don't force something that cannot work. 
We are together. Don't force something that cannot do what? Cannot work. I have always had examples. There is one student <laughs> I met in University of Nairobi who wanted a certain lady. And uh, I can tell you because I sat down with him, he was motivated by lust. I don't think that was love. And so uh, he approached this lady and shared his, poured his heart. And the lady did what? Declined with SOP. <laughs> Told the man, I'm young. I still, I'm still grappling with knowing my life. I'm not ready for what? For courtship. It is not about you. It is about me and God. So just give me space. This man failed exams <laughs> because of heartbreak. So when I was there in a camp meeting, I was doing the UN camp meeting, he came to me and told me he wants to talk to me. Uh, so he told me how his heart was broken. I was asking him, your heart broken? Are you not even in a relationship? Yeah? You are not in a relationship. What has broken your heart? <laughs> He tells me that he expected this lady to do what? Accept the offer. And I asked him, being that this lady is still this young and she was honest with you, don't you realize that her answer is a rebuke to your last? <laughs> and she told me, told me, by the way, I'm beginning to see the sense. Sometimes, the reason why there are a lot of problems in the issue of courtship and marriage is that a lot of people are following their affections instead of giving God the whole heart and the supreme affections. While they are to love and honor their parents, they are also to respect the judgment of men of experience with whom they are connected in the church. And this is why I told you, and I'm sharing to you again, when you've already chosen someone and you want to make a step, Find out your friends in the church who are superior in judgment and table before them and tell them, I am intending to take a step in this direction and there is this young person I've met. Even introduce them. I have friends of mine who have introduced their, their, the people they want to take a step with. Not as in a courtship yet. And someone sees them. Maybe you come with them to church. And the pastor can see them or, or whoever can see them. By the way, these things will guide you a lot. And they can give you their mind. You need to understand that this is very important. Matthew 7 verse 13 to 14 says, Enter you in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go therein. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth to life. And few that be that find it. Marriages are miserable. Be sure that you don't miss any opportunity of choosing right. Seek counsel from people who know God and are of experience. When so much misery results from marriage, why will not the youth be wise? Why will they continue to feel that they do not need the counsel of older and more experienced persons? That is Adventist home, page 72. So one thing I'll encourage you, those who are all here, do not, do not actually pursue a lady or a man to enter a relationship before you have the judgment of those ones whom you know love God and know God, especially those who are older and sometimes even ma married. We are together. They will see things that you may not be able to to see. One thing I tell most men, a woman who is married can see through a lady things that you will never see, maybe in five or seven years. There are things that they have learned and seen that you may not be able to see. And this is the reason why their counsel is needed. But to be more particular, I'm actually talking about parents. This is 
vital factors in the choice. Great care should be taken by the Christian youth in the formation of friendships and in the choice of companions. Take heed lest what you now think to be pure God turns out to be base. Worldly associations tend to place obstructions in the way of your service to God. And many souls are ruined by unhappy unions, either business or matrimonial, with those who can never elevate or ennoble. Paul says in 1 Timothy 5.22, Lay hand suddenly on no man, neither be a partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself. These laying hands mean that you should never anoint anyone in the service of God without knowing that they really love God and they are given to God. The same with marriage. You should not lay your heart and affection to anybody before you understand them. That is why the gospel net gathers both good and it takes time for character to be developed. There must be time to learn what men really are. So don't think that everyone in the church is good. There are people in the church who drink secretly. There are people in the church who have temper issues. Under special circumstances, they will beat you and wrap you up badly. There are people in the church who are dealing with very serious vices. Others are pathological liars. There are others who are having some other serious problems. Do not just pick someone up. Make sure that you are able to understand and know them. Take God and your God-fearing parents into your counsel, young friends. Pray over the matter. Weigh every sentiment and watch every development of character in the one with whom you think to link your life destiny. The step you are about to take is one of the most important in your life and should not be taken hastily. While you love... Do not love blindly. I won't get into this, but these are points that I want you to actually understand. Now, I want to share some things about a godly wife and a godly husband. But before I do that, I want to put my finger on this. Take God and your God-fearing parents as your, as your counsel. When I was here last, there are some things I shared with you. And I think I want to reiterate them very clearly. There's a statement here that when you read, this is about seeking counsel with the parents of the one you are desiring to marry. <laughs> Actually, Deuteronomy 37, 32 verse 7 says, Remember the days of Consider the years of many generations. Ask thy, and he will shew thee thy elders, and they will, they will tell thee. Now, do you know Sister White makes a very interesting statement here, and I want this to, us to read this together. You'll be reading it in your heart as I read it loudly. Let us to Young Lovers 49, paragraph 2. Thou shalt not steal was written by the finger of God upon the tables of stone, yet how much underhand stealing of affections is practiced and excused a deceptive courtship is maintained. Private communications are kept up until the affections of one who is inexperienced and knows not where unto these things may grow are in a measure withdrawn from her parents and placed upon him who shows by the very course he pursues that he is unworthy of her love. A young man who enjoys the society and wins the friendship of a young lady. Let's read together. And be known to her parents does not act a noble Christian part towards her or towards her parents. Through secret communications and meetings, he may gain an influence over her mind. But in so doing, he fails to manifest that nobility and integrity of soul which every child of God will possess. What does this indicate? What does this indicate? See, you have consulted your friends. You've consulted those of experience that you know around. Before you pursue that lady, it is important that the parents understand your intention with their daughter from the beginning. And now you're looking at me very sad. If at all... This is, a, this is for the ladies who are here. 
if that courtship will actually end in marriage, be sure that a man who nobly courts you will have you know the parents and you know her parents at the beginning at the beginning of the courtship. And remember, you are not seeking your parents' courtship to inform them. You are seeking to know their mind and their validation. Unajua watu wengi, tunaonanga wazazi ni kuambia wedding next week. Unakuja unawakalisho unawambia, by the way, kuna msiana ni mepata na tunapanga kufanya rusi December. Tasa anakuja kuleta mahari lini itare. So there is no opportunity for your parents to even know the person. I'm not saying that you introduce yourself to the parents when you're taking the dowry. That is not what we are discussing here. I want you to understand the statement very well. A young man who enjoys the society and wins the friendship of a young lady and be known to her parents does not act a noble Christian part towards her, towards her parents. You'll find all through the Bible... There is, not, there is not a marriage in the Bible that was done without the endorsement of the parents. And if it was done, like the one of Esau, which we read, it brought grief and suffering to that home. Because Esau did not respect Isaac and Sarah. Isaac and Rebekah, that is. He went ahead and did what he wanted. The same, same way, there is a commandment given by God, honor your father, and your mother, if at all you respect God, and you respect your father and mother, you will not permit a man here in UAE to enter in your life when your parents who have raised you up, fed you, even pay your fees, have not given validation for that relationship. And I want you to think it this way. Are your parents your enemies? Then why should you be afraid? I want you to understand this kind of introduction. You know we are in an African culture. And sometimes it's very hard to understand how to do this. You can talk to your mom and your dad and say, there's a friend of mine who is interested in knowing our family. And I want you to study and see. By the way, I usually say that in every home, in every home, in every home, there is the sweet apparent. Kwa pamoja? Kwa kila nyumba kuna the sweeter what? There is the sweet apparent. There is that one who is unapproachable. And there is that one who is always approachable. Use that one. One thing I can guarantee you, there is no first year here. Who will take a boyfriend home? <laughs> because even before you do it, you know your parents will not do what? Yes. Accept it. So even in your mind, we mwenyewe umeshaji, hukumu, kwamba unatenda dhambi. Umeshafanya nini? Umeshakata, we mwenyewe umeshaji hukumu sasa. You can't, they won't accept it. And one thing I can tell you, there is no Christian Adventist home of parents who really know God. Who will recommend someone out of the faith? Unless they have a distorted view of the things that we are learning. We are together. You need to understand that. So your parents are not your enemies. Make sure that from the very beginning the parents are involved. I have seen friends of mine who have been quoting, who after knowing a lady, one thing I want you to understand, this is very important, this is something I never, I never fail to tell people. Do not go to the lady's parents without establishing a connection with the girl. Did you come Nanipata? No, you are not with me yet. Are we together? <laughs> Do you know if you are a conscientious person and the Spirit of God is guiding you and you are being led, there is no way you will want to marry someone who does not want to see you and you don't have any form of friendship with. I'm Jani Pata. It would be very sad to seek the counsel of the parents of a lady who has rejected you. Hmm? 
Mnanipata kweli? Am I making sense? And most of the time every human being has been given intelligence. You are most likely to tell if a lady or a man will reject your offer. Tuko pamoja? Yeah. Kuna signs huwa zinaonekana tu. That this is most likely to be a turn off. But engage the parents of both. First talk to your parents about that lady. Ensure that there is an introduction. Let your parents approve or disapprove. And if they approve and there is the fear of God, move ahead and start the courtship. Amen. The interesting thing is that your mother and your father will be praying for you even as you move. And every time you go home, when you are either from work or anywhere, they'll be asking you how is so? How is so and so? Meaning that relationship will remain stable. We are together. And it means that even the lady or the man is capable of visiting you at home and eat with your parents at the same time. Even though you are not yet ma married. Meaning, I want you to get this point. Meaning, to a large extent, you have developed trust. You have won the attention of the parents of the lady. You have won the attention of the parents of the man. And your in-laws will be your friends during the marriage. And to most men, let me give you as a tip. You will not have a lot of difficulty with dowry. Because you have already rigged the system. We shall rig what? The system. So there is no way. There is no way you will have difficulty with this. And one thing that I, I discovered. There is a research that was, that was done by, by Loma Linda University. They discovered that 80% of marriages where parents are involved from the beginning. End up to being actual marriages. And they are happy. 80? 80% in the whole world, whether they are church people or out of the church. Why? Because you are a, it, it expresses nobility. It is noble. Now, while I'm talking about this, kuna mtu wa mekohabit na msichana wa wenyewe, wazazi ya wajui, you're getting me. Relatives wa yu msichana wa wajui, ata ndugu yake ya kikupata, ata kumaliza. Even the brother. Because to a large extent, what you have done is what we are seeing here. You are a humble what? You are a humble thief. <laughs> you have stolen their affections. And that is why, to ease in some of these things, those ones who have not quoted yet, I know there are some associates who are here, those ones who have not courted yet and you want to get into courtship, this is the way to go. But if you're already in a serious courtship that is leading to marriage and everything is set, make sure that you undo the wrong you've done by ensuring you involve your families at, at the very moment. You get the point? Bring them on what? Repair the damage that you've already done what? You've already caused. And begin to create a rapu because these are two families that are coming together. This will make it very easy for you to be more prayerful and your love will even be stronger. And your security as a lady or a man will be protected. Amen. Because most of the time, let me give you a secret. Most of the time, it is the parents of your man who will defend you in case he's losing his mind. So you come nanipata. And most of the time it's the parents of the lady who will defend you and the lady is losing her what? And these things will be carried through in the marriage. So this is the reason why she says it is important that you know your parents are supposed to guide you. Your parents are supposed to be involved. If you are blessed with God-fearing parents, seek counsel of them. Open to them your hopes and plans. Learn the lessons which their life experiences have taught. And you will be saved many a heartache. Above all, make Christ your counselor. Study his word with prayer. So this is the same point that she's putting here. Whether you should select a companion without regard to the minds and feelings of the son or daughter. This was his question. Why? 
This young man says, do you think a father or mother ought to pick a companion for me without regard to my mind or feelings? I put the question to you as it should be. Should a son or daughter select a companion without first consulting the parents? When such a step must materially affect the happiness of parents, if they have any affection for their children, and should that child, notwithstanding the counsel and entreaties of his parents, persist in following his own course? I answer decidedly, no, not if he never marries. And that is why one thing I'll, I'll guarantee you, if you realize that an affair regarding a marriage is bringing a lot of hassle in your home, I would rather wewe urudi nyuma uskize wazazi if what they are saying is in harmony with what? With the scripture. Hata kama ulisha omba na ulifuata mtindo yako kaona kila kitu but your parents are decidedly seeing a serious problem and you know they are God fearing mark these words. They are God fearing parents. I would rather you obey them because if the blessings of your parents are not in your marriage, that is the beginning of chaos. Because the, the parents in law are supposed to guide the young family. We are together. Do you know the parents of your husband are your parents by default? And the parents of the lady are the parents of the man by by default. And the marriage will only be happy when the two of them are what? Are happy with the two of you. Amen? So the counseling should come as you are taking that step and is a very important. Tomorrow I want us to look at courtship but I want us to review a few things in the Bible. Just turn with me to the, to the book of uh, just a moment as I establish this. Uh, we only have six minutes. I want us to review a few things very fast and then we I see if I can answer a few questions then we end at exactly 8.30. There are some particular points that we want to look up. I'll, we look at courtship tomorrow morning so I won't get into that at this moment. But there are particular things that I just want to make sure we we are able to establish quite well as we are we are moving forward with our study. I want us to see some few marriages in the Bible. And the first one is from, just open the book of uh, uh, Genesis 24. This is a place I had put a summary of this so that I can just cover it very fast. As you open it. Give me some small time, I, I have found it. Let me just open it up. This is all about this issue of cancel. So I want to make sure I establish this on uh, the platform of, of the Bible. Can you read Genesis 24 verse 3 to 4, whoever has found it? Verse 3 says, That is Abraham telling Eliezer that I may make you swear by, by the Lord of heavens and the Lord of earth. From the leaders of the Canaanites in whose lands I dwell. That is up to verse 4. Uh-huh. 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 And take a wife for my son, Isaac. Now, I want you to understand who was involved in getting Isaac a wife directly. His father. It is his father. Now, I want to ask you a question. Did Isaac in any way interfere with his father's decision? Did the father have the best interest? He did, isn't it? Did the father consult with God? He did. Your parents are your helpers. 
if the marriage of Isaac withstood the test of time, then I can guarantee you, by the way, Isaac's marriage was much better than Jacob's marriage. We are together. Because Isaac's marriage had the blessing of Abraham, the prayers of Abraham, the endorsement of God, and it is the parents who actually by faith found Rebecca. Jacob instead, if you dig deeply, Jacob's attraction to Rachel was mostly physical. We are together. It was mostly what? Physical. And that is the reason why, even after being given Leah, he hated Leah. He actually hated Leah. <laughs> Have you ever said that in the Bible? The Bible says Rachel was loved and Leah was was hated and because God saw that Leah was hated he actually closed the womb of Rachel and gave Leah children. Now you need to understand that there are blessings that will come to your marriage when you give their pa your parents their place in your courtship. Amen? By the way, at the end of this I'm going to be praying for those ones who are making a decision to not propose to anyone that they are going to get married to without involving their parents. I'm going to make a call just for that. 